I've spent the last few days messing about with bed levelling, and if you've watched the last couple of videos you'll know I like processors, so let me run you through my thoughts in this episode. Also, I will explain what on earth this thing is. Hint, it's not a 1970s wall clock. I mean, I guess it could be, but it's not. In a previous video, I've shown you what happens if your bed is too close to the nozzle, i.e. too high. And I briefly covered in that video as well signs of a bed too low. Now, it's all good and well printing out a huge single layer like I did in that video, finding out that your bed isn't calibrated, lowering it a bit, trying again, so on, but this is a waste of time, it's a massive waste of filament, and it's probably frustrating enough to drive you straight onto Amazon to buy a BL Touch. Now I've got nothing against the BL Touch, I have one here. You may notice still in the box, I just haven't bothered installing it if I'm honest. I had some brief levelling issues a while ago that I managed to solve by understanding better how the bed actually works, so I never got round to installing it. I also have this box of yellow springs, I probably should install those with a bit more urgency though as I could definitely benefit from these. In case you're wondering why these are better, it's not just because they're stiffer, uh, the profile on the top here is flat, in fact the profile all the way down is flat. It stops them from kind of overlapping and you know interacting with the next spring layer, if you see what I mean. So there's no kind of settling in use with vibration and stuff. I mean I presume that's why the stock springs are so rubbish, apart from the fact that they're weak. But we digress, we're here for bed levelling. Now before I start prattling on about bed levelling and how the bed works, Everything I say from this point on and all the demonstrations will be on the Ender 3 V2. I believe most if not all Ender models work the same way, and many other printers too, but there are probably idiosyncrasies at best. I know that some printers use three wheels instead of four for adjustment. Uh, possibly entirely different levelling systems as well exist. Um, take my Mini Delta printers for example, all bets are off when it comes to levelling on those things, they just don't have levelling. So okay, let's talk about this then. If you've not had a bag over your head for the last couple of years, you'll probably have seen at least one, maybe two, different files that print out a single layer pattern that you use to level your bed. Guide, gauge, whatever, I struggle with what to call these things, so let's call it a bed test template. I'm not one to reinvent the wheel if it doesn't need reinventing, so let me explain why I bothered to make one on this occasion, if they already exist. Well, there's several reasons. Firstly, the reason I mentioned my previous video just now is because in that video I showed how these sort of rough marks will appear if you're too close to the bed, and how you'll see gaps or poor line adhesion, and you won't get a good what they call squish if the bed is too far away. Now to accurately judge this, and to adjust it on the fly to avoid having to do several runs of the levelling print, it helps to have a good basis for seeing whether you're getting the characteristic patterns or whether you have a good flat shiny surface and you don't need to adjust at all. By that I mean you need to be able to see a lot of surface area while you're doing the test. This is why on my design, this is my design by the way, it's not the latest discovery in the South American desert. The diamond shapes are big, big enough to be able to look out for the artifacts. Um, we're not back onto South America. Artifacts as in errors. You may also notice that they are in fact diamonds, or rhombuses, or rhombi, or whatever you want to call these, rather than being squares. There is a deliberate reason for this. By default, Cura and Prusa Slicer, and probably others too, will draw layer 1 diagonally like this. See? So the best view you're going to have of any of these issues is on a square that follows this path. But more on that in a moment, because there's more of that in a moment. Before moving on to the next feature, it's worth considering where the most important place to be printing on the bed is in order to be able to make best use of the printing process that we're using to level the bed, if that makes sense. The bed has four adjusters, one on each corner. Now, it's fairly commonly accepted that these interact with each other. That is to say that lowering one changes the height in unexpected ways at the other three. And this is why when you're levelling, you have to repeat each corner several times. But I don't think anyone self-included truly understands why. If we look underneath the bed, 
we'll see that nothing is touching the bed other than the four connectors. Now the simplest way I can visualize this, because I've just had a bit of a think about it, is if you have a table and the table has a wobble on one leg because it's shorter, this is something we see a lot in Britain because we have pubs and pubs never have level tables. I don't know why. But yeah, if you if you have that scenario, if you push one corner down, what happens? The opposite side of the the opposite corner of the table will go up. Essentially what you've got is a two-legged seesaw. So this is how the bed should behave. If you lower one corner, the diagonally opposing corner should raise up. This is why the most important part of the test template, in my opinion, is the four corners. We'll get onto the center in a moment for other reasons. Okay, so between the corners, we have these circles as shown. They are just another area to check the fill quality on between the two corners. If the sides are both low, or you have multiple sides that are too low, you can kind of diagnose a bit more with that extra information that you've got. But the circle shapes were chosen very deliberately as a separate stress test. Circular lines and the outlines of them specifically, they will fail if the adhesion is not good enough. Where straight lines may or may not fail, but they tend to just fall straight on the bed and you might not notice that they're not adhered. Essentially, curves are a pain and that's why I chose curves. Now the lines that join all the parts to the center, they're just there to help remove the template after it's done. They don't really serve any purpose. Now the center is as deliberate as the text on the outer squares, so we can tackle them both at the same time. Smaller areas tend to cause issues, and when you print smaller things, you almost always start them in the center of the bed. So that's why I chose to make an awkward pattern in the center to test the adhesion more closely here. The reason it's in the middle is also because a lot of beds have a dip in the center. I think it's very common, uh, mine does. This can be solved by putting aluminium foil under the bed to raise it up. And this will show up on this test, or rather if it's dipped it will show up on the test because you'll get perfect outer diamonds and circles and a total mess in the center. I can't show you that right now as I fixed my bed with aluminium foil some time ago. You could probably see it through on the photos. I'm not really in any kind of mood to take that off because it takes a while to get it right. Now, I mentioned the lettering in the outer diamonds. This serves exactly two purposes. Um, I know we're hearing two purposes a lot, but it's good. It's two for one. The first purpose is if you take photos of any part of this template and share them to someone, the chances are they'll be able to see which part of the bed you're showing them without having to ask. You see FL equals front left, FR equals front right, you get the idea. Secondly, it's an adhesion test of those corners. If they don't print well, then you may look like you're close enough to the bed, but you're probably not quite close enough to the bed, or perhaps you're going too fast. So enough waffle, let's see one of these things print. I'll show you what I look for briefly, but I'll also print another in a minute after intentionally putting the bed out of whack for science. On this one, it's not precision perfect, but it's plenty good enough and I'll show you why. Front right looks okay. You can see what I mean now about the lettering and the context now. Rear right looks a very slight fraction low. If you see here and here, it's not quite well joined. Front and rear left look perfect. Uh, even if the front left is slightly blown out by the light, I can see it, you can't. The This marking here, um, don't worry about that, that's probably for another video. There's no issues with the circular parts that I can see really, and there's nothing major with the centre either. So overall this is a print that would signal a go-ahead for me. This is good enough to start printing with. I'm quite pleased by that because I didn't level the bed before this, apart from obviously previously. I do find that the uh, the stock springs do keep the bed a lot more level than you might think. So, as I mentioned, I'm going to intentionally mess this up. As you can see here, I'm going to wind the front left down half a turn, and I'm going to wind the front right up half a turn. Remember what I said about the table leg? See if you can predict what will happen. I mean, it's not rocket science, but we'll see. Also, this is the point where I say stay to the end or whatever, skip to it, do what you like. Um, don't skip to it, you'll miss the result, obviously. I've got a cool object to print that I've found. I guess that's a thing now. I guess we needed a thing. This is me now, the guy who says stay to the end. I've got a thing to show you. I do. I'm not lying. Anyway, um, front right, 
this is offensive, this is gross. I actually had to dial it back just a tiny bit just to save the bed. It's a new bed that I put in for the last episode and I'm in absolutely no mood to cover it in scratched in diamond shapes or rhombus shapes. I don't care what you call them at this point. I don't want them scratched into my bed. This is what the final result was. So it is disgusting all round. But look, the rear right is obviously too close. I bet you would have thought out of context to lower the rear right to fix it. But that's a trick because we never touched the wheel on the rear right. The rear right went up because we lowered the front left. Remember the table. Conversely, but not as obvious on the rear left, that's also gone down uh, further away from the bed. Let's see these close up. This is also a reminder of just exactly how much trouble just a mere half turn out can cause. Do you see on the front right here the, we see that picking pattern again that I spoke about. And on the front left, you've got the loose strands with the gaps in between. Those are your two best indicators. I know I've mentioned this, but these are your two best indicators, when you're printing PLA at least, of being too close and too far away respectively. Right, well, good video. We're all sorted. But I wouldn't want to leave it there. That is it for this test template, but I actually thought about it for a while and I came up with two more templates. You see, this one is great for when you're 99% tuned in and you just want to dial the last bit in, but what about when you're way off? I mean, it starts printing from the center and I haven't figured out really, I mean, you could go into the G-code, but I haven't really got a way of starting it printing from the edge, for example. So in terms of tuning, it's very much for the very last bit, if you get what I mean. Well, anyway, yeah, solution, enter the diagonal template. Now this doesn't look like much, and indeed it really isn't. It's just taking the diamond idea from the last template to its full extent. There's little point watching the hot end printing small areas that go against its natural path, as I mentioned before, so why waste that filament? There's no point having, say, an X pattern on the board if part of the X, you know, the one side of the X you're not even really getting any useful information out of. This template uses half a meter of filament and it should get you within a gnat's whisker of being level and the large areas let you tune it on the fly while it's still printing with plenty of time to watch, tune, wait, take your time, small, you know, small adjustments and so on. I mentioned another template, well actually it's a three in one. I know the surprises just keep on coming don't they? Again I sat and thought about it for a bit and what I was concerned with here was non-glass beds. If your bed is more prone to not being uniform across the whole surface, which is something you get with non-glass beds, you need to be able to look at the edges, the middle, the center. Uh, maybe you know about one part specifically you want to focus on. I made three simple square templates. Uh, this took about five minutes, but the advantage of three separate files, there's again, two, two advantages. Uh, you can print just one or any combination of them. Also, they will print in the order you add them when you import them into Cura. So you could add the outer one first and it will print the outer one first, which is brilliant. Cura doesn't like them because it doesn't know that you want to put one inside the other. So you have to click them individually and click center object and that will fix it. While we're talking about Cura, it was a bit fussy about the line heights while I was doing these tests. Here's what you need to use. Anything else and it might work or it might refuse to slice like it was with me. Um, or it might do two layers instead of one, and that's no use. Well, I suppose it's summary time. This video turned out to be a bit longer, which is an understatement. This video turned out to be a lot longer than I thought for a bed leveling video, but I hope you learned something anyway. I certainly did. Uh, specifically what I learned was that I'd never really joined the dots in my head about how one corner of the bed would tilt the opposite corner the other way. So firstly, get your bed close enough using a less sophisticated template based on larger areas, preferably long diagonal stretches, so that you can see how each line interacts with the one next to it. Then when you've done that, if your bed isn't uniform, you might want to look at the concentric squares to see if you have a dip somewhere. This can probably, well, this can definitely be skipped on a glass bed, especially if you've already shimmed it in the past with foil. And then finally, uh, move on to the diamonds and circles and whatever you would call it in the middle template to get you all the way there. If that one prints and looks perfect, then you absolutely have a level bed and you're good to go. Okay, well, I would like some feedback on this creation I've made. I can take it, don't worry. You can be brutal. I did not spend a lot of time on it. I know it looks like an absolute masterpiece, but I think I, I think it only took about an hour. 
Um, is it useful? Is there anything else I could add? I'm not going to make any promises because to say I'm a beginner at Fusion 360 is an understatement. Um, finally, something cool to end on. I did say so. I think I should probably make this a habit because it totally won't cause you to watch right to the end because that's totally not important for any particular reason. The last video had a bird whistle in it. This is an ocarina, or is it an ocarina, or is it both? I've tried to print ocarinas in the past, and I failed. But this one came out perfect. Surprisingly, against all odds, it actually plays perfectly too. It sounds just like an ocarina. I'll link it below. Um, for a demo, you'll have to listen to the video on the page itself. There's two reasons why I'm not blowing it. The first one is I'm rubbish at it. I mean, I could get a note out of it, it's easy enough. But the second and more important reason, it's been in a child's mouth. Lots of spit, spit everywhere. I'm not going there. I mean, I practically handled it with barbecue tongs. I printed it with fairly high infill, but this was just for the weight to make it sort of feel higher quality. I think I went with 25%. You could certainly do more, but the print time is pretty long already. I think it came out nearly eight hours. It's still worth it though. I printed it tilted in the same way as it's shown here, but I I just used Cura's normal supports, nothing special. Uh, be sure to set the supports to build plate only, unless you want to print a solid ocarina full of support material. Now I highly recommend this print because this is one of those occasions where you can print something out, you can even give it to someone and you can say, look, 3D printers are in fact useful. And they may or may not agree. Okay, well, if you are still here at this point, this is actually the end of the video. You can go now. Thank you for watching.